everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today we are continuing with the series where I take a beat up or broken old book and restore it to the best of my abilities. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. Put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most. These particular videos do take a lot of time to put together, so if you like these types of videos, let me know. Hit that like button down in the bottom corner. Uh, now, the book that we are working on today is going to be The Astonishing Tales, number 25, uh, first appearance of Deathlock. Also first appearance of Major Riker, and also the first Marvel published artwork for a Mr. George Perez. And a two-page backstory on there. So this book has got a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, but unfortunately, this particular copy has a nasty stain on the back of the book that we're going to be working with here soon. I'm going to walk you through the process. Uh, not a whole lot of details because every setup is going to be a little different. Every book is going to be a little bit different. I don't want you to think that you can just take any of these processes and just slap it on the book that you're trying to do and it will work. Uh, I do want you to see the results uh, so that you can experiment with your own setup to get that narrowed down. But if you're wondering why I'm not putting exact temperatures, exact mixes, exact step-by-step -step processes because they're... There is no one-size-fits-all for everything that's out there, uh, but I do want you to know that these kind of things are possible. Um, and if you want to see the results, this book will be going to CGC, in case you're worried about this coming back as a purple label. Uh, anything along those lines, if you want, go ahead and hit that notifications bell. That way you'll see it when it comes back from CGC, which with, we hope, a nice blue label on it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here we have the book. Uh, just going to check over. This one is not in as bad a shape uh, structurally as a lot of the ones that I've done for the series before. The book, in and of itself, you know, is probably in that fine condition as is. There are a few creases on here, but we're going to look over the book. Uh, just make sure there's not anything that I missed. You can see the spine ticks on the side there. No tears. Uh, some small bends, some creases. A lot of the stuff will come out pretty easily, uh, but nothing too severe. We want to make sure there's no large pieces of debris on the book. Uh, you can actually see that bottom left-hand corner, if you go back, is actually dog-eared a little bit. We'll come back to that later in the video. Now there's the big part of it here, that big stain on the back cover here. The back cover is actually yellowed quite a bit. Um, I don't know the nature of that stain either, but we're going to go check through the book here just to see how far the stain goes. And it goes pretty deep into this book here. Uh, put my, I found the center staple, so I went ahead and put the uh, magazine board in there and as you can see this stain basically goes all the way to the front cover with even just a little tab up there uh, I put my 65 pound paper underneath the front cover I put my 65 pound paper underneath the back cover and this will give me a good support uh, structure just to work and clean the book on the dry cleaning side which is where we're going to start at first And you see that dog-eared corner down there. So just a little makeup pad, unscented. Again, work your way uh, from the middle to the outside. Uh, just be careful if you do have uh, creases. The paper gets weak on those creases. If you press too hard, it can uh, just pull those right off. Um, again, this book's not very dirty, but... You, know, you want to make sure there's no large pieces of debris on the book every time, so don't ever skip this step. A brand new modern book, maybe, but on these older books, you never know what could be sitting on the surface of the book. Next, so we're going to take an absorbing sponge uh, and clean the back side of the book. Again, work towards the edges. Uh, with an absorbing sponge, you really don't have to worry about the colors or any of the ink, it does not really pull uh, colors or ink unless you really just work very hard in a concentrated area. So that's probably your best tool for like yellows and red areas. And you see we picked up quite a bit of dirt off the back cover with the, the absorbing sponge. We're going to hit the front cover again. 
full cover, work towards the edges. It's not like a broken record, but the second that the instinct kicks in and you go against that, you'll tear the cover. I, I have done it. It's just a natural reflex to kind of go up and down. Uh, and if you don't avoid it, you, you will take uh, some damages on the books there. So again, got a good bit off of uh, that. Uh, checking here, I think I was contemplating whether or not you know, going ahead and hit the stained area with the absorbing sponge, but I was going to have to treat that area anyway, so I think I just thought better of it. And then on the back, we're going to go over the back with a white artist eraser. And then the next step here, it's hard to see in here uh, in this image, but there's there's quite a bit of like black scuffing in these white areas. So I'm going through and cleaning all those up with the eraser. Now with the eraser, you want to stay away from your bright colors, your reds, your yellows, that light blue over there. Now whites, dark blacks, like you can get in between the text and stuff like that, and it's really not a problem. Uh, even like darker blues and stuff like that, very hard to lift color as long as you don't concentrate erasing in those areas. Uh, but mostly, like I said, just pulling up the, the scuffing that we see in these white areas throughout the back cover. Not wearing a glove this go around. Uh, sometimes I do if I'm working on a book that needs a lot of attention on the dry cleaning side. This one doesn't need a ton. So I figured my hands were probably a very low chance of actually getting like sweaty or oily in this process. Checking over the front cover just to see if there's any areas that I would use the eraser on. Very little here that I would risk that on. So we'll just go to the next step here. Now what we are going to do here uh, is build the bottom part of our stack for this phase, which is going to be that 65 pound piece of paper. We're gonna put a piece of regular copy paper. We're gonna take that one out from here. Keep our center uh, board on our staples supported. And then we are going to use a method called a heat overlay press. Uh, we're gonna apply this sheet of soaked paper. It's soaked in hydrogen peroxide and just smooth it out. We wanna get the, all the air bubbles off of that. And again, that is just a old Disney a gift card, so you don't have to pause it and try to get the numbers off of it. There's nothing on that card. Uh, again, make sure it's completely smooth because if there are any creases on there, it will press the book into those creases and almost like pinch or crimp the book into it. It's very hard to correct if you do not get it completely smooth. A little extra attention right where it's wrinkled up at the top. Want to make sure that it gets a good grip on that, another piece of copy paper. Put our magazine backer board on there. Oh, sorry, that was a 65 pound paper. There's our magazine backer board. And then it goes to press. After press, uh, we're gonna check our results here. Uh, peel down our stack. Take our two pieces off. It's very satisfying. It is hard to explain uh, the um, effect when it comes off, but it is, it is very satisfying to peel that off. Now, as you can see, I did get a lot of it off, still visible, clearly, uh, but the color has lightened to the color of the paper, and we are going to try it from the interior now. Uh, sometimes the staining can get very deep into the paper, and pulling from the back can help reduce that staining. Now on this first attempt here, I am going to actually wrinkle the paper. I completely butcher putting this piece down. Um, I do try to fix it, come back and approach it a little bit wiser there. Uh, but as I'm smoothing it, you can start seeing those, those creases in it. And I try to save it but ultimately I am going to have to discard this one and start over again. But again, it's not a big deal. Um, you just take it, toss it, you can't reuse it. Once the paper's been creased, it's pretty much creased. 
Yep, marble value stamp still in it. Uh, and we're going to put our second piece down on there. Again, approach it a little bit more with a little bit more common sense on the second approach. Get it nice and smoothed out. Again, absolutely no lines about tear the paper there. Just nice and smooth. Don't put any pressure on it. It will tear very easily because it is, again, soaked with hydrogen peroxide. We're going to close her up, smooth the back cover down, just to make sure that it's laying flat. Now, occasionally on these books, you will need to press them before you can do this. You do need a fairly flat surface to get this process to work uh, well. We're going to put our copy paper on top. And then there was a 65 pound and a magazine board there. And we go and press again. So we're going to take our stack apart. Again, be very careful as you're doing this. It does stick. It's not like a very a super adhesive, uh, but if you're not careful, especially on like a uh, older, more worn cover, you can end up tearing uh, the, the paper. Uh, it doesn't weaken the paper uh, the, through these phases. It's not going to make the pages brittle. Uh, some of the stuff that we're going to do later will make expose them to a lot of heat uh, and can make them brittle. But through these phases, they'll stay pretty, pretty pliable. Uh, as you can see, a little bit of a fade uh, on the color. Not a ton, though. Uh, so we're going to continue this process, but I think I'm going to just stick with doing the overlay, not the interior one. Uh, so we're going to put it back down um, and shoot for another one. Alright, so this is our second overlay. Uh, so we've done two overlays, one interior at this point in time. Uh, getting good results each time. Uh, obviously still more to get on this one here, but as you can see it has lightened again. Um, what may not be as obvious on the lightning is the surrounding color is lightning as well. Like So the tanning on the outside uh, rim is actually lightening as we do this process as well. And you'll notice that later in the video when I do the before and after pictures how much wider the back gets throughout this whole process as well. So we're going to put it back and we are going to do our third overlay at this point. Again, just goes right down and we will make sure there are no creases or air bubbles in the sheet. And we put our top of our stack back on and we put it in for our next overlay. So obviously eventually you're going to get to a point where you're getting diminishing returns. Uh, we've still gotten pretty noticeable returns each one of these uh, attempts. This is why I've done it a number of times here. Um, at this point we've gotten pretty good results. Uh, it, you can still see it looking at it, but I think we're going to move and try a different approach with the uh, misting and the blue LED lights to help see where we're at after that and see if we're going to need to do this process any longer. So for that, uh, I do have a special box set up. Um, again, we just missed it very lightly. Um, with that, we're going to set this for approximately three hours, uh, misting intermittently to keep the pages hydrated. And that is misting with hydrogen peroxide again. Uh, this process for this book is the longest process uh, as uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 129, um, this one we're going to have to do all the pages again. Normally I would not do the pages on this book, but with the staining inside of it, I had to uh, to get that, that stain out. So as you can see, the book has swelled up immensely. 
Uh, this is with a cold press every night. If you don't cold press it, it would be even more uh, ballooned. But you can look how white those pages are. And as you can see, where we had stain before at the top, we do not have uh, any stain, noticeable stain on there any longer. Kind of give you an example of the page quality difference there from a treated page to an untreated page. But just flipping through the book here to see if we've got any stain left. And it pretty much took care of all of that stain on the inside of those pages. Again, it is a long process, though. For every one of those pages, it was three hours worth of a treatment. As you can see, there's still a little bit of an outline, but the color on that is completely normalized to the color of the book. So there's a little bit of a halo. Uh, we're going to try some different methods on here to see if we can get the, the last little bit off of it. All right, we've got our 65 pound paper. Uh, I've dabbed that with just a little bit of distilled water. Again, not any amount of pressure on here at all, just very light surface rubbing. Again, you can't see it now. Uh, we're gonna get this thing ready for the humidity chamber and see what it looks like after that. So after it's been humidified, um, as you can see, the pages are no longer brittle. It's back to being pliable. You can flip through the book again, um, and we'll build our stack from here to get it ready for the press. Again, standard stack. We've got a magazine backer board in the middle to support the staples. We're going to put 65 pound cardstock between both covers. Now be careful. Um, like I said, I think in this process, one of the interior pages actually got dog-eared uh, through this process because the, the pages were so puffy that when I tried to lay them flat, one of the corners rolled under instead of rolling out. That is just regular uh, printer paper for the top. Uh, You'll have other people who use SRP paper. I do not like SRP paper as it will trap water and if it traps that water, it can actually imprint uh, waves into the cover of the book, which are very hard to get out. And then we take it just into the press. Nothing fancy here, aluminum plates on top and bottom just to help disperse the heat evenly. So after our first press, because it's never just one press, we all know. Um, again, just looking at it, very hard to see anything. Um, at the right angle though, you can still see a little bit of a halo from where that stain was at. Uh, I think I get it in the light here just well enough to where you can kind of see, there it goes. Uh, again, it, there's no color difference, but tide lines are the wrong word for it, but the outline of where the stain was at is still visible. So if you knew what you were looking for or happened to just find it on the inspection of the book, you can see that something is wrong. Um, I'm checking out the front corner here. The corner I thought was super rounded before. I've actually noticed after the press that it's folded under uh, the very, very tip of that corner. So I've got to pull that back out. I mean, very delicately. See, you get that little bitty corner there folded under. Very carefully. Normally, I would use a, a tool. Um, I guess I was just too lazy to go get one there, so I'm just doing the very tip of my fingernail. So you gotta be careful because those can just come off. So now, instead of it missing that rounded corner, it has a color breaking crease on that corner. So 
always err on having more of the book still there. Alright, so kind of thinking about steps at this point, just trying to figure out what the best approach is is for this. Do I want to do another overlay? Um, and ultimately I decide against it. There's not a lot of color stain still there so I'm trying to figure out ways to reduce the appearance of that. That Again, halo is probably the best word that I can use for it. At this point I am going to try a mild surfactant um, or a mild soap detergent that I use on occasion to get that uh, cleaned off there. Again, as soon as the surface becomes wet, you can't see it any longer. So I'm just trying to gently go over the surface, no pressure. Again, just taking that cleaner over it, trying to smooth out that, that rough line or outline of where the stain was at so it's just less visible take a dry cloth after that one just to dab up the remainder of the uh, surfactant. Again, do not press hard though. It will take color off. It will damage the paper. Just very, very gentle. Alright, put it back in our stack and we'll repress it to see what it looks like then. So after that press, uh, again, it is better, but as you'll see there, right there in that little flash, it's still just enough of an outline there that if you get the light right, you can tell that there was something there before. Uh, so what I do here is I've got some absorbing putty. I do not use this very often. Um, I'll usually only use it if like there's mold on the book. It is very good for pulling stuff out of the fibers. Um, so at this point I'm trying to see if maybe it will pull out any of whatever residue is there that's still visible. Uh, the reason why I don't like it is as it dries it gets more tacky. Uh, it can get stuck in the fibers of the paper or it can just pull really hard on the paper sometimes. And I've had books just rip uh, due to the tackiness of the putty itself. Uh, I did try here. My camera did shift too, so you, you don't see my pants. I'm glad I was wearing pants in this uh, particular part of the video. But yeah, the camera shifted down there, but I think the work area still stays mostly in the frame. Um, it doesn't pull out as much as I would like, so at this point I just take an artist eraser. And I'm basically just trying to erase the outline of this stain at this point. Um, again, there's no color difference, so we're just trying to get rid of that hard break that is visible in the right light so that it, it isn't as telling whenever somebody is looking at the book. So there's no color left of the stain. We're just trying to get rid of that halo. It's kind of just hanging around, and the eraser is actually working pretty well. It is actually erasing that that firm sight line so that it really just blends unless you really are looking close um, at that specific spot like you'd have to know what you were looking for on this book to even be able to tell anything at this point so here I'm gonna adjust the camera back up again um, I've got a little black light camera here I'm going to shut the light off that on the overhead and I'm going to shine that black light just to make sure that that stain didn't leave anything in the paper that would show up underneath the black light. And as you can see, there's absolutely no difference in the spot from where the stain was to the stain or the areas around it. And 
as you can see, that stain is all the way gone now. Yeah, then we'll just check out the front. Just again, make sure it didn't need another press after I was working on it. I was pretty happy with the shape of the book after that press, so I did not press it again. We've got the bottom corner there, again unfolded, and then we take out the rest of our stack. Make sure the book still lays flat. Get it nice and focused for you guys there. And then here is our back shot. And we've got some before and after pictures. Can't tell a lot on the front cover. Colors are brighter. We didn't do a whole lot with that, but man, look at the difference on that back cover. Stain is completely gone and how much whiter the whites are. There's another reference for you there on the page quality difference all right so that's it pretty impressed with the results if i had to guess i think this book's probably in that 8.0 range again if you haven't already make sure you hit that notifications bell so you can see these books when they come back in until next time guys hobby hero out